Howdy folks! So if you watched one of my recent videos on an IDE to SD card adapter, uh, I mentioned that I was working on an i586 project, and this is another video that's going to come out of that project, and eventually I will do a video on that PC itself, but for now uh, I'm going to split this out because I think this is interesting on its own. Now the motherboard uh, has a really terrible uh, like SIS um, graphics, uh, you know, integrated graphics, um, which is terrible for a couple of reasons. Um, not only is compatibility really terrible, uh, but it also robs like 30% or more of your CPU performance because it shares uh, regular memory. Um, and of course, uh, the memory bandwidth was pretty terrible on those old systems, you know, with EDO memory and stuff. So anyway, I wanted to get another graphics card. There's no AGP port on the system, um, so I needed uh, PCI. It wasn't going to do ISA. That's a terrible idea. So I wanted to just get something off eBay, and um, I sort of I wanted it sort of relatively quickly, and I thought, just for the shits and giggles, uh, you know, are there any, you know, brand new PCI uh, graphics cards still in production? Um, and so I searched, like, Amazon and Newegg and other places where you can find stuff. And uh, lo and behold, uh, yes, the answer is is kind of yes. Um, this is available uh, as a new uh, PCI graphics card from a bunch of different vendors, somewhere between 20 to 30 Canadian dollars, um, and you can buy this, next day delivery. Um, and so I did. And so this is what arrives. It arrives in a general a generic box. Um, you know, it's just like it just says PCI card on it. Um, and this is what you get. Now the PCB is definitely brand new. The passives and everything on here are definitely brand new. Um, but the primary chips here are definitely reclaimed parts uh, from you know from something that was originally e waste. Um, this card is based on an ATI Rage XL, which was a low end card from their Rage lineup that was produced up until around 2004. Um, the date code on this particular chip is 2003, so um, you know this is a vintage chip, um, complete with dirt and scratch marks and everything. Uh, same thing with the video memory and the ROM chip. So I do believe that these are um, you know these are salvaged and reballed chips, which is fine as long as they work. I don't really care. Um, but it is interesting to see that there, you know, there's clearly some place that's still manufacturing these um, because there seems to be a lot of these out there, and it's a low enough cost that it works fine uh, for my purposes. I don't need, I don't need to get like a Voodoo card or something like that. I just needed some 2D and maybe 3D acceleration. This can do it technically, so uh, this would work fine. So anyway, I pop this in the system, uh, boot it up. It's not detected. It doesn't do anything, um, and of course, I'm thinking that it's defective. But I do a little bit of uh, digging and probing around, and. What I uh, ended up discovering was that the chips were cold, um, you know, and I expect that, uh, you know, even though this doesn't need a heatsink, it's going to dissipate some amount of power. I expect these to get warm, um, but they weren't getting uh, warm at all. So I, I actually traced out the board, and uh, I discovered something. So this is actually quite a bit different. This PCB layout is not a copy of the original, like, ATI uh, card from when this was originally new. This is a, um, you know, a, a very uh, cost-reduced board um, with significantly less on it. And uh, what I found out is that this card is 3.3 volts only. So if you put this card into a system with 5 volts, it will not run. And uh, that's because uh, this transistor here, it's just being used as a, a, a series pass transistor, like, an, like a, basically an LDO, um, it is connected to the 3.3 volt rail uh, to, to derive the core and memory voltage. The 5 volt pins are used. Um, there is a capacitor on the 5 volt um, on the 5 volt rail uh, because this ROM chip is 5 volts. But everything else is 3.3, and so you need a slot that can deliver both voltages. And if you know anything about PCI, um, these two slots, uh, these two slots that are cut here in the edge connector, are actually important. This one is for 5 volts, and this one is for 3.3 volts. So if you had a card that was, for example, 5 volts only, you would not populate. Uh, this slot, and it would just be solid uh, across here, uh, and the inverse of that for 3.3 volts, which is pretty uncommon. And then this, where you have both, is called the universal card. And so this should, uh, because it's got both slots, it should be universal. It should work in my 5 volt slot, um, but it doesn't because this is kind of, kind of a, a, a hacky way to do things. So they don't have to put two separate regulators on here to save a couple cents. So it's kind of sketchy. I know why they, they put this slot on, this, this, slot, this slot is here, um, because if, if you take a look at any PCI slot from a, like a modern motherboard, or you know, as modern as you can get, um, they only have uh, the, the divider here and not here, uh, because in the later versions of the PCI uh, spec, um, they, they, um, 
they both deliver uh, 3.3 and 5 volts even with only this divider here. You don't you don't see both in the slot usually. Uh, so anyway, this uh, this card doesn't work in that slot, and so I thought, well, I could return it, um, but what, what else am I going to get? Because um, they're all the same. So I thought, well, uh, I can modify it. I can um, easily retrofit this. So um, I very rarely get to do this, but uh, I get to feel like a cooking show, and um, I've modified this card, and I have something that I've prepared earlier. Oh yes, it's another one. So, no, in addition to my 586 project, I also have a 686 project from an ATM, nonetheless, that I'm also working on, and it also needs graphics because it has problems with its onboard graphics. So I thought, well, um, I'll buy another one. So I lied to you a little bit. This is actually the card that arrived first. This is the card that I arrived sec uh, second. Uh, it's exactly the same one. Um, and I just haven't modified this yet, so I could do this nice A-B comparison. So this is the original card. Um, this is what happens when you modify it. And it's really trivial what I've done here. It looks really sketchy. Um, but you know what? It works fine, and no one has to see this other than everybody that watches this video. So anyway, um, so what I've done is I've just taken a little 3.3 volt uh, fixed regulator here um, that I, I think I got off some monitor PCB. So that's totally salvaged. And the 5 volts comes in, there is a filter cap for the 5 volts, and then there's an unpopulated pad here, probably for a, um, I don't know, maybe a resistor or a, a link or something that's not used. Um, and so I've just tapped off that um, into the, you know, the ground, and, or actually, sorry, that would probably be a ceramic cap because there's ground on one side, what am I thinking? Um, it's been a while since I've done this mod. Um, so yeah, that would probably have been a cap that would have been placed there that, that just isn't fitted. And so I just bring up ground and the 3.3 uh, volts, uh, sorry, and 5 volts to uh, this regulator, which regulates down to 3.3 volts. And then I just soldered the output to, to the tab of this uh, series pass transistor, which then takes the 3.3 uh, volts uh, and it, pa it uh, you know, derives, I don't know, whatever the core voltage for this is, 1.8. I, I don't even know what the core voltage is. I don't really care. Um, and uh, lo and behold, this works perfectly fine. Um, I don't know what regulator this is uh, because I actually wasn't able to look up the part number um, like I said, I got this off of a monitor PCB secondhand, and, uh, I couldn't find this anywhere. Um, you can Google the part number, it's, uh, AK3363 9G5, um, couldn't find it anywhere, but, uh, it had lots of threes in the part number, and it looked like a regulator, so I, uh, plugged it into a bench power supply, and lo and behold, it is a 3.3 volt regulator, um, so works perfectly fine. Uh, don't know what the current, uh, you know, capability of it is, but this does not draw a lot of current. Um, I suspect this whole board probably draws a one watt, uh, you know, something like that. I, I think two watts would be pushing it. Um, so the current is not very high, so I'm really not concerned about what's going through this regulator. The regulator gets a little bit warm, but uh, it's not hot. And also because the tab is connected to the tab of this, which of course is uh, connected to, you know, a decent, uh, a decent plane in the board, I think that there's a, a decent amount of heat sinking here anyway. This, uh, this wire resistance, um, you know, inductance doesn't seem to cause any problems. Um, again, this is not a high power device, so it's not a real big deal. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, this is, this is entirely a valid way to make these work on, uh, retro systems. Um, now, of course, this will put the reg the, the generated 3.3 volts on the 3.3 volt pins in the, uh, PCI Express, uh, socket. Now, if you had a board that actually did supply 3.3 volts, I wouldn't put this card in it because now you've got the 3.3 volts in the motherboard that are going to be fighting with the 3.3 that comes out of this regulator. And if they're not exactly the same, you're going to have, uh, you know, some, some current going, um, you know, between one or the other. It's probably not going to be a big deal, but I wouldn't recommend plugging this into like a, a proper universal slot at this point. Uh, I would probably, you know, disconnect this, just lift one of the leads before you do that. But, uh, you know, I, I don't see myself ever actually doing that. So if you have a retro system um, that has a 5 volt only PCI slot and you need a, uh, you know, a graphics adapter to make it work, um, you know, you can totally get these, these, these sort of <laughs> new Rage XL cards, um, but you're going to have to make this modification because all of the PCBs have this layout uh, and you can easily spot it. It only has this one big transistor. Um, the original cards will have, you know, multiple uh, you can t you can just clearly see the multiple power transistors that they have um, for the the dual voltage regulation. So, anyway, um, yeah, I thought this was uh, worth sharing. 
not because it looks pretty or anything, but because I think it's informative if you happen to buy one of these. It's not actually broken. It just happens to be um, that these are 3.3 volt only cards, and they don't say that anywhere. Um, I, I wanted to say in the documentation, but there literally is no documentation that comes with these. Um, you just kind of have to figure it out for yourself. And uh, I think the only other modification I made to this card was I had to snap this this bottom tab off here because the, the spacing of the thing wasn't right, and I actually couldn't get this into the slot that I, uh, like, into the case properly. Um, so I just broke that off, and it works perfectly. Not sure if that's just a thing to deal with the case I'm dealing with or the fact that it's uh, this isn't really properly fitted. I suspect it's more my case, but anyway, um, that was the only other mod I had to do. So yeah, um, that's all I've got for you today. Um, I'll bring you more more content uh, around the vintage PCs as I work on them, but uh, that's uh, all I wanted for this video. So until next time, thanks for watching.